Morning and all, hope you're all keeping well. Well today, I'm doing something a bit different. That's a bit early, but I thought I'd try and take some mackerel. We don't get hardly any mackerel here, but yeah, I'll give it a go. Well today, I ain't using rods. I'm using electronic jigging machines. They're an automated reel system. They're made in Sweden and they are brilliant. They ain't cheap, but they do the job a treat. So you start off with a Bellatronic jigging unit. Then the feathers go along the boat, to a roller and letter box, round the roller, and it come back down and go to a stripping box. Obviously these bars here strip the mackerel off. Then it go over the end of the stripper box and there's a lid. Basically it's all automated, you set the depth of water, for example, I'm about just over 20 foot. I set for 20 foot. And all you gotta do is press all and that'll do all the jigging for you. Easy, eh? Well I I've come on my own today. So I, I self-launched on the beach, I just gotta tidy up this root and anchor. I don't like to have roots hanging about, it's not good on the boat. So I'll get that packed away and hopefully get some mackerel. The water isn't particularly that clear. As you can see it, there's quite a bit of slub in the water as I, or most of it will know is may weed. So we can just give it a go. Who knows, I thought how sheer the water is, we won't get nothing netting. So I just try something, didn't I? Well, these are the feathers I use. I've got them rigged in 20 hooks at a time. I can actually fit 30 a side, but I do use 20 a side a fair amount, especially in the shallower water. But the heavy duty, obviously, they about one mil line, over 100 pound. But they are, they do do the job and they're quite wearing, hard wearing. If you used like angling style tracers, they just ripped to bits on the stripper boxes. So obviously the fish, get pulled through them bars and that, that's what pull the mackerel off the hooks you'd never ever do that were standard angling traces I just smash them to bits just looking on the sounder there's a lot of fry there hope there's a few mackerel chasing them boy the water clarity ain't the best deal well, it never really is this isn't like the south coast but all you can do is try really well, there could be quite a bit of weed in the water. There's seems to be plenty of fry there too. But we don't get a huge amount of mackerel around here, not like the safe coast. If you come off here and do this and get a box in a few hours, you're done well really. The safe coast, they'd laugh at that sort of quantity. But you gotta deal with what you got in you. There ain't a lot of mackerel here anymore and that's life. That's a lovely relaxing way of fishing compared to normal commercial fishing basically just sitting here and letting them do it for you they're jigging up and down nicely going through the letter boxes can't ask for any more than that oh i, I haven't got these how you conventionally set them up the standard mackerel, pro mackerel program is that drop the lid down to the bottom and jig straight up and strip every time but that don't really work around here because when you get a few mackerel I'll be pulling up all the time and there'll be nothing on it so I like to leave them down you can normally tell when there's mackerel on them when you look over the stern of the boot you see the line going in circles so I normally sit on the stern of the boot and my eye over the side or it has a bit basic I suppose but we don't get the mackerel like they do up Scotland or down south so they kept stripping every time that's just a waste of time if you're a commercial fisherman or want heavy duty feathers, the best person to see is Ed Russell at Fairwater Fishing. When I first bought these jigging machines, I bought them second hand, I didn't buy them new. Well, even though I didn't buy them off Ed, he was so helpful. He is the top man in the business. I phoned him up, or I did buy some feathers off him, but I didn't buy the jigging machines and he was so helpful. He told me the best way out of design or a better way out of design these jigging or stripping boxes. He said, you don't want to come over a roller. You want a slope 
and that's what I made up. Well, the line on these is braid, obviously it's like 250 pound braid. That's strong old stuff, but in the shallow water here, I very rarely use, get onto the braid much. I mean, in 35 foot of water, and you obviously see the knot there. But I do mainly use it's like 250, 300 pound mono. Obviously that take all the abrasion and everything and working through the stripper boxes rather than the braid taking it. And obviously when I'm stripping the max off, that take all the pressure. That's cheaper to replace a bit of mono now and then that is replace braid. But you want the braid if you work in any depth of water, but anything around here is shallow as hell. You don't I think the deepest bit of water around here is about 150 foot. That's only one little bit. Most of it is 20 to 50 foot really. Everything's shallow work. Well, someone asked me about my stripper boxes and where I got them. Well, I actually made them myself out of scrap, really. I like the ink shop front and a good fabricator would laugh at them. But that's all you can do. I only got a garbage person, just got a garage, a TIG welder, and a little grinder. And that's what I made them with, really. I ain't really got anything else. But I'm happy how they turned out. They work all right, they do the job. And that was bespoke to fit my boot. I got a tactile 21. And I didn't want the feathers going across the boot really, because it's only a little boot. So I got them running outside the gunnels. That's ideal for me. That's a lot to make it safer. All right, they ain't far apart, the jig machines. It's only like eight foot wide, these boots. So in deep water, you'd have to be careful about the lines crossing, but in the shallow stuff I work, you ain't got to worry about that. So that suit me, if you're working 50 metres of water, yeah, that won't be no good, they won't be far enough apart. But for working 50, 60 foot of water max, what I do, no ideal really. Just got my first mackerel. I'm happy with that. Does it come down and go in the box? It's got a huge fish, but as a start, that's still quite early in the year for here. But as a start, one mackerel's better than nothing. As soon as, I, as soon as I catch any mackerel, I stick them in a polystyrene box with a wet towel and some ice in there just to keep them cool in the heat. If you're going to catch them, look after them. Here they come. Stick off in the box. Lovely. And then send it back down again. Oh, you didn't flick down into the box at the bottom. But that's a start. All right, two of the three of them mackerel are under the size limit. But you've got to think I'm a commercial boot. With the new EU laws, even though we're not in the EU, we're not, we're against the law for me to return any mackerel. They've all got to be landed and put against the quota. Whether they're oversized, undersized, if I catch them of legally, got to land them i can't chuck them back but they won't be wasted them small mackerel i vacuum pack them and the pike anglers love them but they need a few more than three better get back to look at the machines well there's a offshore breeze today 10 to 15 roughly and once i get out of the lee of the land that's pushing me off quite a bit i got them mackerel just on the contour line but I blow you off so quickly. What I should have done is bought my drogue. Sometimes I chuck a drogue over the front of the boat. When you got your drogue, uh, drogue over, instead of going off, you go along, that like double your time in the area you want to be. Well, I went to about 50, 60 foot of water and there weren't no fish there. So I'm now motoring back inside. I'll get back up to 20 foot of water. That's the limit to where I can work. 20 feathers really. I'll get back into the 20 foot of water and then I'll drift back out again. You seem to get a lot of really small juries right in the beach and I don't really want them. I'd like rather get the better ones. But we'll now drift back inside. So we ain't far off the beach. Well, I, when I go right tight to the beach and get these little jewies, anglers could hit them with the feathers 
I'm less than 100 yards out, but then again, anglers can't keep them little dewies, so there's a few bigger ones. But they're more like late July, the better ones, but anglers could get them. No doubt, I go less than 100 yards, so any caster worth his weight in gold can chuck a set of feathers 100 yards, but obviously, be careful chucking cheap feathers hard, so they'll just part. If you're going to chuck any feathers any distance, Either go buy them off someone like Ed Russell or make them up yourself. Them little thin feathers you buy, call they're lethal if you're trying to bung them any distance. Well, now just off the beach, obviously stopped. That's just about 18 foot of water. See, the lines are going slack. I really want 20, but I'll soon drift out. There's a few short bait fish shells, I think they're just young heron in there. The heron do breed around here, so the fry sit right in the beach. There's some lovely shoals, but you don't seem to get the mackerel like you used to. We used to get plenty of mackerel around here years ago, but we don't get many now. Like I say, a box is a good day around here. Well, places like Cornwall, they'd laugh at a box. We wouldn't even bother putting the sea with the... But we've got to deal with what we've got. That's nice just to come out here and see some mackerel. I don't know whether it's, I'm a fisherman and I'm supposed to see a few max. When you see them in that clear water coming up on the feathers, I get excited like a small child. Obviously, as a shallow as any 20 foot of water, the top of the feathers are out of the water. I don't know where you can see them digging in the water. But it's a lot easier than doing it by hand. Oh, it may not be so much fun on the rod when you're an angler, but this is what it is. The white ones sharp well. I think I've got, might have a couple on here. Let's give that a go. Let's see what we've got. Oh, there it comes. Three. Just look at what I was doing. Just pull the lead into the box. Just got another one. Another, another summer little visitor here. The old sea gooseberries. You get tons of them little jellyfish. People think they're jellyfish eggs, but they ain't their full size jellyfish. That's the species they are. Put that mackerel back in the box. Slide in, lovely job. Let's have a little look, see if we've got any. There's a few that time. Happy days! Well, that was the best one so far. I had five on one side and one on the other. So that's a bit of a result. They soon end up in numbers when you start getting a few like that. There's a few that time, lovely job, even better. The first one's on the flood, whatever next. A bit further off now. I'll give it a go here instead then. Just locating the fish really. See when they get taken off by the strip of bars and just go down the chute and fall in a box. Or as a bit primitive. That's all I've got on a little boat. I do suit several different fishing methods. I can't rig it out permanently, especially when there's only a few mackerel about. I can't rig the whole gear out with shoots here everywhere. We've been doing this about 45 minutes. We've got a few, obviously laughable to other people's standards, but for around here, that ain't too bad, really. You just got to deal with what you got. Safe Coast or Scotland would laugh, but for around here, that's all right. And it's still very early here, really. You don't normally get them to get food till July, really, inside. As you can see by the drift, I've actually gone straight out now, so 
that's slack water here. Just got the last three quarters an hour of the ebb. I know getting the slack. Let's see if there's any on the flood. The water normally shear up on the um, shear up on the flood here. Normally a little bit of colour on the ebb. But the water look all right at the minute, you can see the little tiny jellyfish in it, but there's still some slub in there, or mayweed, whatever you want to call it. That's just dead plankton. The plankton die this time of year, and the heron gorge on it and get fat and full of oil. We used to get a lot of midsummer heron here, but we don't seem to get them anymore. The seas change so much, I don't understand it. I don't think anyone do really. The seas, very complicated how it works. Well, I overshot and we've only about 15 foot of water so the gear ain't jigging but you can see a few hooks down in the water each hook is nine inches apart well, you can see down a little way but it's just fairly sheer but that's slack water at the minute typical they've gone down but we've got several seals circling us they ain't daft nearly everyone around here do drift netting so they're obviously looking for the dans at the end of the gear. They know that when they see a flag and a dan, there's nets between it. And that's a free feed, but they're going round and round me, looking for the dan, obviously there isn't any. I'm the only person who's got any of these jigger machines around here. Oh, you don't really make no money out of this sort of mackerel fishing. <laughs> but I just enjoy it. I think that buying these two jigging machines, and if you had to buy all the stainless strippers yourself, that ain't cheap. Lucky I made them, but jigging machines ain't cheap, so I don't make a profit doing this. I just do it because I like it. I think I just, I've been done it since I was a little kid fishing, so I just always enjoyed it. It's not all about money at the end of the day. I don't catch a huge amount of mackerel with this jig fishing, but I bloody enjoy it. That's one of the most favourable fishing what I like to do, and, and it's easy to do on your own, isn't it? Because I've been potting at the minute, I ain't got my net hauler on, and trying to haul nets on your own and a bit of breeze is a nightmare. So this is my next best option, really. You really want two boots. One with nets in it, and there's hauler, another one rigged up for potting. But the price of boots now is bloody expensive. We always seem to get huge shells of bait fish, but we don't hardly get many mackerel following them like they used to. Times have changed because like, the water's got warmer and they don't come, to, well I've been told they don't come down the east coast of Britain. I spoke to a few Scottish fishermen, and there's always some come down the east coast and there's some go down the west. But they reckon now all the mackerel from up north, nearly all of them go down the west coast of Britain, so we seem to miss out, but the size of that shell feed, you think, Years ago, there'd be tons of mackerel behind that, but it doesn't seem to be just not there anymore. Since that tide's changed, now you start the flood, the mackerel seem to have disappeared. Not that I had many, but we got probably 15, 20, something like that. That was in the last half hour of the tide. And I haven't had anything since. The tide started to flood and I haven't seen a fish. Just been, there's probably only a few mackerel about here at the minute. That's still early yet. But you've got to be in it to win it. That's a lovely morning. That took me longer getting ready than it normally do. Obviously, I had to put the jigging machines on. I don't leave them on the boat. They're too valuable. They get locked up in the house, they do. One of them sitting on the boat has a lot of money's worth. Someone could steal easy. I should have maybe got up a little bit earlier. But I got up at quarter to five. I mean, quarter four well that was early enough <laughs> too late eh if you look there I'm fishing 35 foot deep we've got a three foot jig right out over one of it then but I was set at 35 foot with three foot pulling up so that's deeper than we could ever reach with the drift nets they only fish like 12 foot deep or we put one strops get a bit deeper but you never get these mackerel on them in uh, drift nets they're far too deep for that well that's the only fish i've had since the floods come through that's a better size fish actually but we need a few more than one i just couldn't even tell that was on there periodically i bring them up but normally you can tell when there's fish on there you see the line twiddling in the water well since the floods come through i just had a couple of little fish 
but they all seem to be tight to the bottom now. They were mid water, now bang on 40 foot on the bottom. I had one on each jigger machine, and that's both on the last hook, so you've got to stick them to the bottom now. Well, since that flood has come through, all the fry disappeared. Can't see any fry for lovely money. And you saw how deep it was earlier. Obviously the fry gone and so was the mackerel. We had two mackerel since the flood started. It's not very good. Well, it's been very quiet since that flood come through. Seems to be a lot here now. They must be chasing them fry and them fry disappeared. That's life. It's still a cracking lovely morning. It really is. One thing what I don't understand is I've used these jigger machines for a few years and drifted a lot of miles with them. And I've only ever had one bass. That's a little tiny schoolie, probably about half a pound. I don't understand why you don't pick up a few more on them. But all I can put it down to is a thick line. That's a mill. A stick old mono. That's all I can put it down to. You just don't get them bass on that on that thick line. They see it. They ain't that daft. But I must have drifted past thousands of them. But I've only ever had one bass in like five years of having them. Strange, isn't it? As we're now on the flood and the leads are going on the boat slightly, you can now see the lead going up and down on the plotter or the sounder. It's going up and down and see it, just watch it clear as day. They are a big old lead, they're about four or five pound. I find if I used anything lighter, some of the mackerel would lift, lift the weight up and it tangle the feathers up. So I thought I'll put something a bit bigger on it. And also because they're so close together, I don't really want them feathers moving at all. If they start drifting side to side with a few mackerel on it, they tangle up. So right, it's not ideal having a lead that size, but you've got to adapt to your own situation. As I'm drifting on the flood, the feathers are going under the boat, it's now picking up the individual feathers. And this is old kit really, this old hummingbird. It's quite an old bit of kit, but it still work well. You can't beat them really, these are the first ones I've done the side scan. Handy units, really, especially protecting wrecks and that sort of thing. Now that flood's underway, look at all that slub in the water. A stick of it now, look like you've, someone's mixed a little flour up in the water, full of particles. Tons of it. One thing you need to remember, is obviously the hooks are running up and down, don't lean too close. One, because that could stab you with the hooks, and two, life jackets. If you get a cut looks in the life jacket, that's shot in it. That's a dustbin job. So you gotta be careful. Well that's that. That's now on and half into the flood. There was any a few hardly anything on the flood that was all on the ebb. I got nearly all the fish in the last half hour of the ebb. So all I do is I get the feathers and I stick them in a box. When I get them I'll fill it up with water, fresh water leave it for 10 minutes, then get them out, hang them on the washing line and let them dry and then I'll put them back on the polystyrene. They last a few trips, especially with the little amount of fish we get here. Well, that's been a thoroughly enjoyable trip. Obviously now I'm motoring home. Hope you enjoyed watching. All right, it's not been that productive, but it's nice to see a few mackerel. That's still early yet. Although as I'm going on my own, that's a lot easier use jigger machines than it is all behind because the net haul is not on the boat obviously got the pot all on the minute well thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it see you later bye